Welcome everybody for your Caribbean Poker Party main event, the Millions World. Here's our first feature table of the event. We are coming in three hours in, two hours in, pardon me. Level three, 4,000, 8,000 the blinds. And there we have the chip counts on this feature table, of course. As with all Millions events, every player starting with one million in chips. Here. At our Millions World feature table. And as I say that, Ryan finds Kings plus one. Raising up once again. Well, Carlos with a very playable suit of ace on the button. This time electing just to call has been pretty three bit happy thus far, but a different situation, Ryan opening in early position. Much better just to call with his suit of ace on the button. And the pot is going to be played heads up. And queen at a six, deuce. Very broken board. Smack one of the runs going to see bet a very high frequency. Twenty. Of course, we'll do so with kings. Carlos haven't paid his deuce. More than enough to continue in this pot. Seven of diamonds on the turn. Does bring a back door flush draw in. Ryan again with a yeah, pretty clear spot where he's going to bet three streets here with kings on this kind of board. Eighty. Eighty thousand. Going a little larger on the turn. Eighty thousand. And the card, seven of diamonds that Carlos can convince himself. Ryan's picked up a draw. He's continuing with. So no surprise to see him call once more. <coughs> and well, ace on the end. It's not a card Ryan is going to be particularly concerned about. I don't think he has. Thinks Carlos has many A-sexes, perhaps A-sex of diamonds. It's a question of whether he can squeeze some value here, and if he thinks Carlos has a queen, he may well elect to bet here. And Carlos hand does kind of look like a queen. Ryan has gone for a nice bet, 240,000. Of course, not going to work out too well here. It's Carlos has aces up. And now a decision for him with just 300k more. Whether to jam or just cool. And he does go for the cool. Let's see, he might jam there. But Ryan does have better hands. Queen's possible, ace queen perhaps. Alex making it 22 with a pair of twos under the gun. Dress again, playable hand. Ace four suited in the small. Nice. She doesn't want to get involved out of position. Gags electing to call. He's facing an under the gun raise. An off suit king, but deciding. 22k was just a little too small for him to fold, and he's flopped pretty good on this one. King 6-3 rainbow gives him top pair. Alex, uh, he's going to attack a lot of these boards having open under the gun. And Deuce is probably the, <laughs> the hand that needs the most protection. So he's certainly going to see bet with them. Oh. 
And Michael does continue, of course, with his top pair. And that five even working for him, giving him some backdoor draws. If, for example, it came a two, he picks up a gut shot. But what a horrendous card that is for him. It looks like a complete brick. But gives Alex his set on the turn. Oh, Michael's going to lose a lot of chips here. No way out of this one. Alex will know that Michael can have some hands like this. 6-5, 6-4, king-5, king-4, 3-4, 3-5 that have all picked up extra equity. Hence him sizing up. And of course, it does himself doesn't block any pairs, having turned his hand. So many hands Michael wants to continue with this, certainly one of them. You just get to size up, really tax your opponent. And of course, with that pair and gutship draw, no decision here for Michael. The decision comes on the end. And he doesn't improve. He checks it on over this pot. Around about the 400k mark, Michael with. I think just a little bit 300k left, so we'll be facing an all-in bet here. That's when the real torment's going to start. All-in move. And this one makes Michael feel a little bit sick. He was praying for a check back there. He knows he can be taken to value town by pretty much any king here. Any king that opens under the gun is probably going to bet three. Alex can have those sets, of course. Sixes, threes, deuces can have aces. Yeah, nice fold. There aren't a lot of hands that would have fired a second barrel on this board. But then, I'm going to shove river. He did get away from it. Alex in the hijack, jacket of diamonds. Coming in for a raise, Carlos. Going to play with him once again, this time 7 6 of clubs in the next seat. For us, ace 10 off on the button. He's going to make the call. Joko also with an ace in the big blind. Raising two calls in front, flicks it in for the extra 15,000. Wow. Ace, queen, four, two clubs. Carlos with the flush draw. Faraz and Joko both flopping a top pair. It's the opener, Alex, who's uh, missed this one. Although he does have the back door flush draw, but not going to stab in a four way pot. Carlos, though, just seven high in a draw. He may feel the need to have a little go at this one. Yeah, probably has the strongest range once this flop is checked by the people at Razor. You'd expect for us to three bet all his big aces on the button. Oh. And of course, in Joko, the same from the big blind. So, uh, although they both have an ace in this pot, they're really the least likely to have aces in this pot. Joko with the back door, not flush draw, holding the ace of clubs. Very nice hand to call with here. Faraz's bet so small as well, just 25k. Does call, taking it a three way. Carlos now being called in two spots, turns a pair. This is a hand decided to keep going with. Give me a very bad shape here, and he's been called twice. Like a better made hand, one player, a better draw. I like it. He is going to really try and put pressure on. One pair of hands. One at 25, the bet. Whereas Ace 10, of course, going nowhere yet. Jelko now facing a bet and a call for the second time in this hand. May just be able to let this one go.
nice fold from him. And the play on this table so far has been top notch, as you would expect. Queen on the end. Comes, misses. And yeah, no surprise to see him give up on that river. Alright, this can definitely have some Queen X still. Thinking about going for value himself here with ace ten high. I'd be surprised. Well, he is. That's two hundred k. Of course, he does have missed draws himself. It's just hard to imagine that many hands that Carlos has bet twice. First in a four-way pot, then in a three-way pot on the turn. And then we'll check all the river that are weaker than ace ten. but it'd be very, very optimistic. <coughs> I think with the seven, it's more likely a call. Don't think he expects oh. for us to bet this too often. And wow, look at this, he does get... Does get value. Nice bet by Faraz. That's one of the few hands I think that could call him. Joko, King at Clubs raising from the cutoff. Jack's defending 7 3 of spades in the big blind, flopping a flush draw on the 10 10 8. That, of course, giving Joko a pretty strong hand here with 10s and 8s. Twenty two thousand the sea bet. And gags with a flush draw, but nothing else with it. Expect him just to call this one. Twenty two. Jelko is gonna check this board back some of the time. It's a little wet. I can't just assume he has nothing, but here we go. Michael turning that flush. Jelko improving. The king's up. Has all the pairs. Kings, tens, and eights. Certainly a lot of weaker hands that can call here. Gut shots with the spade in their hand. Other eight X's. Does fire again. Half pop. A decision whether to raise here. He's pretty short. Or as I suspect, probably just check call. There's a paired board. Raise here does look pretty strong. Yeah, it does call much better perhaps to play this. There's a cooldown than a raise with the seven high flush. It's his thinking, and well, a bad card for him in the sense that he's easily beaten now, but also it's unlikely to get any more action here. At least when he knows it checks back, he's going to win this pot. Faraz under the gun, 22,000 to play with Ace King. Philippe in the next seat with the same hand. And look at this again, Audrey's 
Keeps getting dealt in some pretty grim situations. He finds Ace Queen in the cutoff. Shuffling those blue 100k chips. This is a hand he feels like he maybe has to four bet fold. Oh. Nope. Yet again, he manages to avoid getting involved. Oh. Under the gun and under the gun plus one, which is so much strength. Wow, Alex, the top spot as well. He finds tens in the small blind. He feels like he has to play, but it just makes your hand so face up. When you're in these spots, out of the blinds, cold calling. It just looks like a hand at nines, tens, jacks. Not really a hand he can full bet with. This doesn't block any of those stronger hands. 75, right? Carlos folds sevens from the big. Some serious hands out in this one. Now back to Faraz, who surely will fall back, having it open under the gun. Really, with about 50 big blinds to start the hand. There we go. Faraz just does slide it in. And this is pretty grim for Philippe. He's three bet under the gun open. It's been a cold call from the small blind. But as well, of course, looking like a hand like this. Could of course be traps. And the original open for Faraz has just moved it in. This is not an easy call off with Ace King. How different this would be if these players are on later position. The question he's wondering is, what would Faraz do with a hand like Jack's? Would he jam here? I don't think he would. Queen's plus, probably ace king. And can he have any bluffs in there? Could he be doing this with ace queen? <coughs> oh, Philippe does get it in. I'd probably be pretty relieved to see he's up against ace king, and well, <laughs> Alex will feel sick <laughs> that he's folded against the two ace kings. What he had. Yep, look at that. King 10-7. Unless he had 10. Well, he could have had 10. Yeah, he had 10. It's true. There we go. <laughs> Carlos analyzing this one. If somehow this had got to the flop. It would have been a monster pot. Two ace kings, pocket 10s and pocket 7s all dealt out on this one. Carlos, King Jack of Diamonds, plus two. He's coming in for a raise. Faraz in the next seat. Ace Queen, also in diamonds. Up against a 30 big blind stack opening. Faraz could definitely go one or two ways here. Looks like he is electing to three bet. One fairly sizable as well. 120. Against a 30 big blind open. Carlos uh, can't peel too wide already, so. It's definitely a healthy sizing. Carlos, I imagine with this hand, will peel. And plays pretty well post flop.
Wow, what a flop. Both players smash the board. 10-9-4, all diamonds. Carlos is busting. Now, <laughs> how slow are they both going to play this? Is Faraz going to slide out a little seabet? It's very easy for them to get this in by the river. Decides to bet 80. Give Carlos a little bit of room. Carlos. Could make a mistake here, he thinks. Little does he know, whatever happens, this is going in. Carlos, you'd imagine, with just a call here. Allow Faraz to hang himself. That's what he'll be thinking. No, nope. he's going the other way. He's coming out with a little raise. 100,000 more. Faraz can't believe his luck. Carlos with just over 200,000 behind. Now I'm just decision. Just Faraz, just get it in here any point in just flat calling. Does Carlos ever check raise fold this board? Does he want to get it in now before a scare card comes and potentially kills his action? Right. Well, when he says, and Carlos says, I've got a flush. <laughs> well, that's as cold as it gets. And uh, you got my snake flush out too, right? I can still catch you eight of diamonds and seven diamonds. Yeah, yeah, eight of diamonds, seven of diamonds. Well, that is the only way Carlos has to stay in this wow. tournament. Running seven, eight of diamonds. All four of the big diamonds are gone. All right, good game, guys. Yeah. What's that? Thanks, man. Have fun. Well, with that, Faraz back over two million. In fact, very healthy. 2.5 million chips in his stack. Carlos out to the floor. Still, of course, plenty of chances to play this tournament. Entry open until the start of level three on day two. Thinking about it, but I can't see how you can call up with ace eight offsuit. Over twenty bigs. Just gotta let this one go. Maybe better situations to call off. Well, looks like he is just going to call it off. And it, AC. It's had enough of folding. He is in bad shape. Deuce all but finishes him. Backdoor diamonds. The only out. Oh, wait a minute. Does pick up that flush draw. Not to be black card on the river. Or just also to the rail. Just like that, two players busting. Quick succession here on our feature table at the Millions World. Go our break coming up in about 20 minutes. After that break, we will switch up the feature table. And Richard Seymour appears to be on it. Well, as you know, Simon Devon in the foreground, the NFL Hall of Famer. See in the middle of the room there. It's certainly filling up. So this will be our next feature table. 
what's working. <laughs> Diane looks like she's doubling up. Or paying out a bit. Looks like paying out a double up effect. So our upcoming feature table after the next break. Big one, big one's coming up. Yeah, I don't know who's gonna win, but we'll play a uh, Queen we'll play ten up six, two, six. two clubs. Mm -hmm. Alex checks for us with backdoor hearts and some backdoor straight draw. I actually think I tried that one. He's gonna fire in a little better one big blind. No, he tried. He oh, was he ready to play the big pot. You apparently weren't. Fair enough. I was in there, I just You were in there, yeah, yeah. You get most of the credit. <laughs> All right, so course calling with that pair. No. Interesting turn card as he turns a two pair. Raz picks up, open straight draw. I swear to God, I know zero hands from the session. Oh, someone watch your stream. Oh, Faraz fire again. Put pressure on. Alex's sixes. Ten he might have. No, no, like Start to fill the heat as the bet is 50k. Respect, Alex. Just to pull this one. We've all played together for like five years. Yeah. Played with them for like seven years. For seven years. For like five years. Cool is what he does. And wow, Jin River running jacks gives him the full house. Flush draw completes. Now, when I get to play your pot. It's not out of the realm's possibility that Faraz goes for a big bluff here. Uh, he does decide just to check back and a wise decision as he gets shown the jack's full. Did you play online back in the day? Huh? Did you play online back in the day? Where? All right, well, that looks like it is the last hand with this cast of characters. Alex is running full house, taking down the last pot on this feature table. These guys go back to the main floor, and it'd be Faraz taking the table chip lead with him. Philippe still hanging in there, but with just over 15 bigs when they come back. Welcome back, everybody, to your Caribbean Poker Party main event. We are, of course, at the Baja Mar. Casino and Resort, and this is our new featured table. You may notice a few more chips here. Richard Seymour, the second shortest stack, but over a starting stack. Only Rodriguez, who is below that starting stack. Richard raising up Queen, six of clubs from the hijack. Yvonne with tens on a button. She throws in chips for a call. Rodriguez with ace four. Completes from the big blind. We go three way on our first part of this new feature table. Queen eight eight. Richard taking the lead. Keep Even as a backdoor flush draw. I would do the mistake, sure. I would do mistake, sure. Here. Uh -huh. Yeah, better. That's fine. Okay. My action checks too. Move on on the button. And she's happy checking her tens back. See a free turn. And the turn is indeed a three. Rodriguez checks and surely now Ritual betters Queens. It's been about half pop. Move on. Well, the tens will have to stick around for at least this bet. Oh. 
Rodrigo. Rodriguez. Let's see, uh, no interest in this one. <coughs> two players. Heads up. Wow. Everyone doing her best to keep a straight face. As she rivers tens full. Everything else missed. I'm just going to feel pretty confident with that river card. Gonna get some bad news in a second. Ten seconds. Yeah, a lot of chips. It looks like another bet Nine over half pod is indeed 180,000. Uh, how much does Yvonne make it? Richard with 900k behind. All in seems a little optimistic. Or 25. Wow. I think Richard's just going to have to let this one go. Again, never quite know what the dynamics being established so far on this feature table. It's our first time with this table, but they have been playing together all day. There are a lot of hands that beat Richard by now. 10 seconds. Nice. Nailed it. Questioned if it's 10s. He got 10. Oh. Ah, he's going to pair it off. That was my gut. You had 10. <laughs> well, he made the read. He just forgot to press the fold button. Ace Jack cool. decides to peel the open. Andres cool. Cool. won't be getting involved. Flopping Simon on ace ten at six. So I'm trying to make out the best course of action. It's a bit or check does elect to check. check. Richard checks back his ace. And wow, not his <laughs> start to this table. Yet again, he's been too outed. Um, he's going to do chips again. Simon, surely bet now. That's 100 into 150. Nothing but a call cool here for Richard. Holding top pair and a gut shot. Cool. A very nice river card for Simon to see. Improves the Queen's full. Another great card for Richard. Is Jack now longer? No longer in play. Aces and sixes with a queen. Simon can be fairly sure which has either missed the draw or has an ace given he holds two queens. There's not much else he can have. Missed draws and an ace. So it should go a little bit bigger here. And there it is, 350. Something's out for Richard. Could be up against a hand like King Jack. Would Simon have checked the flop with that? 
Simon, check the fight with Ace Queen, Ace King. Probably not. Queens and King Jack, the most likely hands. And all those Miss Spades. Seconds. Can Five. Richard find the fold? He does. Oh. Very disciplined fold. That was a pretty strong fold for Brett. Finds kings in the small blind. So fast work today, up to 1.7 million chips. Raise. Well, he's raised, but very small, just two and a half x out of position. This is too small. Well, but it should seem to get action with kings. Ten seconds. Simon having all think, but can't see him doing anything but calling with this hand. Call is what he does. Makes a pair on six, seven, ten. Fairly wet board. Two hearts out there. Charette, of course, with the king of hearts. Having raised pre, so to fire up continuation, but another fifty thousand. I don't think Simon can do anything but call here with his pair. Does eight on the turn. This should slow everything down. Can't see how Charette can bet. And Simon, you'd imagine. Check back and just hope to win at showdown. Chip. Beats all those big card combinations still with his six. Wow, the river gin. Simon makes two pair aces up. And the ball just keeps getting worse for sure. Taking his time, but surely we'll check this. And then the question how much Simon bets. Five. Ace is up super strong in this situation. Almost certainly got the best hand. And he has a huge range advantage the way this hand's played out. Raise from the small. From Charette. Bet on the flop. Simon called. There's all the two pairs. Can have a straight to check back the turn. Ten seconds. Going for three quarter pot this time. Sure, I'm trying to piece this together. What can he beat? Would Simon just turn the hand like five, six into a bluff here? And you have some missed hearts with no pair. 
horrible right now. Ten seconds. Five. He does make the good fold. Said it himself. It was a horrible run out for his hand. Small blind, big blind. Thousand race. Hunter raising to 50,000. King at 10 of diamonds. Plus two. And Richard lurking behind. With that 20 big blind stack and pocket kings. Is he jamming? Or is he going to just slow play Ten this? Seconds. Both be fine plays. Five. Given he's already jammed over water okay. twice before, it's nice to do it once more. And again, I don't know why Andreas is wasting at this time. He's not calling nines, he's certainly not calling 9 8 offsuit. Oh, wow, Diane finds kings in the small. Bit of a cold deck for her. She's seen Richard three bit jam Four twice times. before. She saw him open jam a moment ago. And now he three bit jams and she looks at tens. The concern here, of course, will be Walter behind as the opener. He covers her. She has a little over 1.1 million. I think it be a reasonable play. She can call here and if Walter does decide to get in, she can Ten fold. Seconds. That's exactly what it looks like she's going to do. She'll be very pleased to see Walter fold, but she'll be uh, less pleased when she sees the cold deck situation she's got herself in. Like <laughs> <laughs> there we go, rather unfortunate, but still in with a chance. But the team has done it to me. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Queen, three, deuce. Two diamonds, neither player with the diamond. Not you? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> you should never afford to be. Oh, I would go. Oh, day down to 760. Richard back up to close to a starting stack, courtesy of that full double up. Richard with another big hand, ace, queen of hearts, under the gun, plus two. Grace. Grace, 50,000. Raising it up to 50,000. Andreas, ace, four of clubs. Again. Four. Four. He's played too many hands, it's Andreas. Well, Diane, chance for instant reprieve. She finds aces against the man who just doubled through her. Button. Sub 40 big blinds. Very nice situation. She does bump it up to 150, three times the open. Pretty reasonable given their Four. stack depth. Mm. To see Richard just flat call this one, take it to the flop. Ace Queen suited. It's a good hand, but. Be careful. Diane is a rather conservative player. So you have to tread very careful post flop. And 
10, 7, 3, rainbow. One heart there for Richard. Nothing to get him too excited. And does check it. Over to Day. Who can definitely consider checking this back. It's not a flop she hits too often. It's nice to have some traps when you check back. She's gone for the small bet instead. 125 into 350. Definitely make an argument for taking a card off here. Little hearts, two other cards. Oh. That's exactly what he's done. Nine on the turn. Bad card for Richard. Oh, good card for his perceived okay. range. And Dave with 485 back. 600k in the middle. Look, it's time to just drop it in. Which is unfortunate in the sense that Richard doesn't have anything. Ten seconds. Hi. Hello. There it is. And there's no way Richard can call this with Ace Queen High. Well, she gets the good news of no snap call. Could be exact count. <coughs> 10 seconds. Five. And once more, Dan with another big hand. Ace King of Diamonds in the cutoff. Once again, raising up to 150,000. Oh. Oh. Andreas, of course, makes the call with King Queen of Hearts. And wow, Ace Ace Eight. They got a lock on this one. On the flop. Three of hearts on the turn gives Andreas the flush draw. Let's see him check for this one. Check. Check he does, and oh, they check back the flop, but now it's time to bet. Build some of this pot up. Mm, Fifty the bet. Andreas still beats some hands. But as I said before, Day is fairly conservative player. So I know he needs to hit more than King Queen High. Be good. of a time card. Wow. Oh. Oh, 
it's another fold from Andreas that you just can't be making. You don't want to get that many chances in someone like this. You can't be giving up big hands. Uh, as our final level of the day is about to get underway, lines going up to 10,000, 25,000. That 25,000 big blind ante, and that's how things change. Yvonne just below the 100 big blind mark as our table chip leader, Walter, also over the 2 million chip mark. Richard, the shortest, with 645,000, still 26 big blinds. Plenty of play here. Easy call for him to take a flop. King, King, five. Rainbow, honey, Richard with the backdoor flush draw. Expect on to bet this flop having a raise from early position. Big advantage over the big blind peeling range. 35,000. Should see Richard Gall here with backdoor clubs, ace high, and overs to that second card. It's a great card. It improves to a pair. He checks Yvonne. Surely they won't put any more chips in this one. Queen on the river. It's a little concerning to Richard. Vaughn has some of those four bit hands, Queen Jack, Queen Ten, that have just got there. And I like it. She's going to bet big if she bets, and it's 200,000, just under the pot. I know, I know. I forgot. This is pretty grim for Richard, and he does just let it go. Paid her off before. This time he folds and it's a bluff. And also the first day of truly good weather. Richard Seymour, bit of a legend, right? Yeah. <laughs> Don't know anything about American football, but he's he was pretty good at it. I'll go with that. It's fun. Not a bad poker player either. What we've seen. Yeah, he plays pretty decent from what I've seen. He's been deep a few times and some stuff. But, you know, the most respectable thing is the hat, clearly. <laughs> like, it's not pretty even boss, close. We can, we, can, we can talk a wall about all, all we want about his poker skills, but that hat is I mean, look pretty... At these look at Charette and Simon with his baseball caps, and then you've got yeah. that hat. You're like he's looking like a, like a park ranger. <laughs> like a... Walter peeling from the big King Jack of Hearts. Here we go. King high board. Maybe a late double up for Richard. Barring uh, any kind of crazy run out here, Tom, just yeah. be a bet, bet, jam. Yeah, definitely bet, bet, jam. I, I can't see Walter calling River, though, to be honest. Versus under the gun. I personally would. Oh, well, how about wow. that? Wow. Well, in it goes. Check jam. <laughs> it's it's a pretty decent check jam actually, yeah. but like it's a uh, it's a really good bluff catcher as well. Yeah, I mean you put Rich in a tough spot with all those pocket pairs, right, and some diamond draws. You're getting direct value from diamond draws, and you get to get him off ace ten and stuff. You know, all sorts of hands that have can turn equity. So it's not a bad shove, but. Um, Recommend a call. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be extremely hard to get away. I mean, this run out, he's definitely going to go broke. Anyway, right. So there we go. Richard back above a starting stack. Big hit to Walter. <laughs> sorry, language. There we go. Let's slap your wrist. Sorry, sorry. Not what happened again. Poker go. To 
write an apology to I'm sorry, Harry Katz I'm himself. Sorry. I'm sorry, viewers. If anyone out there is under 18 watching on Pokemon, I apologise. Rodriguez coming out with a three bet over at Vons Open. Oh, look at Sharat. It's so tilt. You just can't wait to get out of here. Because you Kenny. almost want to get another shot tomorrow. Like, bagging up 300 is kind of a nightmare. It's, it's not the end of the world, but, like... Right. You just cap yourself. I mean, it, it's good at least that you can... If you bag for day two, you can still re-enter, right? Yes, you can re-enter up until not the, uh, level three on day two. It's not the one bullet per day, meaning if you bag up, you're just done. No, you can st I'm, I'm I pretty can sure still you can just fire right? away on day two for the first two hours. Yeah. yeah. But only once. It's one per day. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Ace, nine, eight. Yvonne peeling the three bet. Ah. Would like a little quarter bet from quarter pot from Rodriguez. Right, a little bit of protection and his player type. I can see him checking a lot. I would like a 90k. It's getting a little bit bigger than that. Yeah, it's fine. I think betting is better than checking. Right. But not by tons. Obviously, uh, I'm not going to work in this instance if I'm having flop top pair. Interesting, she pe peeled the three bet pre flop. Against Rodriguez. I would like to apologise again for my language. We'll forgive you. It was a slip of the tongue, it's been a long day. Well, not that long of a day, relatively, but... Uh, well, seven on the turn. Keeps I'm ready. Rodriguez, that open-ender. And Yvonne, of course, picking up a gut shot straight to herself. Honestly, you could start bluffing tens, like, huge here if you really wanted. Just bet, like, 500k and shove the river. Wow, maybe that's what he's thinking. I'm not sure if that's what he's thinking. Well, he's gone quite small, 260. You wanna you wanna bet there or bet the river? This is gonna feel pretty grim for everyone, right? Yeah, but you've got a gut shot now. Yeah, I mean you can't so can't fold now, but you're not really liking life, are you? If a deuce comes off, you're just like ugh. Now at least you can <coughs> carry on without. You're not in just such a, like, pure bluff-catching spot, you know, like... Right, this feels pretty similar to the last time when she called the ace ten of clubs ace two streets. You think it's going to bet a river? I don't know, this is going to be fun to see. Let's see a brick. Come on, give us a brick. No. Uh, how about he just backs into the straight? <laughs> if we had a bet, I would have bet against him betting. Yeah. And I'm you would have right. won because the six <laughs> came off. <laughs> yeah. You would have got me for loads. <laughs> Tens is such a good bluffing hand when you block a uh, ten jack on the turn, and you have such a big range advantage. I mean, what size does he go here now? <laughs> one point one in the pot. Logically, you should bet pretty you small. Yeah, yeah. Two seventy-five, <laughs> three hundred. This could get paid, but I doubt it. It's really confusing for Yvonne. Right, it's hard for him to bet without a 10 in his hand. You're just so like... At what point was he getting out of line? That's and you don't put him on ace-10, because it's a free bet pot. And, like, ace-10 is also, like, a really ambitious turn bet. So, in Yvonne's spot, you're just like, what is going on? Like... I mean, this has the worst hand to just check jam. I'm not sure what's going to happen now. I think she'll end up folding, but uh, I wouldn't be crazy shocked if she called. You're just like, what the hell is this? You just have a set of nines or something. Right. King 10 suited. You think this guy's going to 3-bet a, a total bluff hand? She called. Mm, yeah, she does call. I think exactly the reasons you were stating. It's really unfortunate. Yeah. She couldn't really work out what 10x. Yeah. He three bets and bets three streets with a very valid point. 
She's left with exactly a starting stack. It's pretty brutal. If there was no time banks, I would I would need a lot of time for this river decision. Yeah. Nice sound. Guy on sand, same thing, doesn't make sense. I think okay. Diane just said that she doesn't think he would 3 vert Jack 10. Yeah. I mean, he shouldn't really have any 10s, honestly, but he's got two of them. <laughs> well, it's a slightly different line, and it worked out because he got paid the max. Riga's over 3 million chips. Sivon raises up under the gun, and now she has to deal with the Deadman. Rodriguez has played a pretty interesting style. Not not like uh, he could have he could have made a couple decisions better, but uh, he's um, he's done well and he's been a bit creative, which I like. You know, he's not just like no. fit or fold like a yeah. lot of players from well. today. Mm -hmm. Walter, he's gonna look down the pocket three. He's on the button with the raise and call in front. Nice way to end the evening. Try and pop a set. But it's not you. No. So they two for us. They two for us. I think this is the last hand of the evening. Kind of lost count in the middle there, but. See any late drama. Ace, four, five. Gut shot draw for Walter. Von seven still best. Simon with backdoor hearts. Hard for Von to stab with this one, surely. Called twice by players in position. I like a bet. I like, I like a small bet, but I don't know if it's correct. Right, she's going to bet. Um, I'll knock out Simon, but hard to see Walter going anywhere with his threes and a gut shot draw. Not for 60k. Um, it's interesting how you should compose your range on the flop as you've on. You're not going to have that many bluffs. You're only going to have Broadway, really, from under the gun. So maybe it's just like a range check on Rainbow Ace 4 5. But uh, I would end up betting a quarter a lot as well. I should have checked the turn. Walter in position. I just like to take a card here, see the river. Instead, it's going to bet. Good bluff. Yeah. I mean, this is a good bet if we know Yvonne's betting these kind of hands, right? But it's just a pure bluff anyway. You're never going to play it for showdown, so it's pretty good bluff spot. You don't block any of the hands that sh that you could get to fold either. You could see me about to break that, huh? <laughs> wow. Wow. She suspects. His sizing suggests to me that he might just be like blocking. Not really. I'm not. You know, he might not be seeing it as a bluff. Right. Just wants to deny equity. Yeah. So we'll find out now if he, how he's perceiving it. I think he might check back. Which is okay. He does. Nevon will scoop the last pot of the night. Some consolation, at least. Last one, really? Is it? I believe that's the last one. I should check Chan. But, uh, I'm going to ask now against him. Because I had an ace and maybe had an ace. <coughs> so he looks at yeah. and Richard stood up counting out those chips. These players have all made it to day two, along with Tom. Yeah. This is how they finished. 
Ramos Rodriguez ending up as the table chip leader. Kind of out of nowhere. Bagging up 3.4 million. Simon Debman just below two starting stacks. That is Charette who, well, kind of got bashed from pillar to post today. Bagging just 360k and I guess coming back to 15k, 30k, Tom. So you were 10.25 last level, so, you know, 12 big blinds. I think it might be 20k. Okay. I think they might roll it back. Not really. Well, that is it for us on day one of the party poker. Caribbean poker party.